It's the show where Hawaii's newsmakers come to talk and to take your questions live. From the nation's capital to Honolulu Hale, from the state legislature to the fifth floor, we bring the experts to you and ask them what you want to know. Spotlight Hawaii with Yanji Denise and Ryan Kalei on the digital platforms of the Honolulu Star Advertiser. Aloha, happy Aloha Friday. Thanks for joining us here on Spotlight Hawaii. I'm Yanji Denise. Ryan Kalei has the day off on this Friday, but we soldier on. And we've got a very important guest, one who is making his Spotlight Hawaii debut today. Please welcome in DBED Director James Tokioka to the program. Thank you so much for being here, sir. Thank you, Yanji. It's an honor and a privilege to be a part of this show. I really um, appreciate the invitation. I'm sorry, Ryan Kalei. Couldn't be here. You know, I've worked with Ryan before at the legislature when he was with the governor's office, um, but I'm honored to be here with you today. Thank you. Well, and we've got a lot to cover. I just want to start with the basics, which is, uh, you know, we know that you have a long career in public service. Of course, you served uh, with the transportation with the airports division, but now you've taken on this new role. Uh, how did you come to decide to accept this invitation to take on the role and what are your priorities in this office? Well, thank you for that. Um, well, first of all, the, the governor asked, uh, the governor's chief of staff, um, you know, asked me <clears throat> during the campaign if he had been successful in the election, if I'd be interested in being one of his cabinet members. And um, at the time I was working for Spectrum, I was also the state representative representing Kauai. And I told him that, you know, I'm, um, I'm good where I'm at. Um, he kept asking. There was an opportunity for me to move over. So um, I just told him that I would serve wherever he thought uh, I could be of help. And he called me one day and he said he wanted me to go over to the airports as a deputy director of airports. And um, uh, Director Sniffin called me uh, that same day and the job offer was made. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I don't know anything about airports. I know how to manage people. I've been managing people most of my life um, from the, in the, the early days in the hotel business. But, you know, taking on a task like the airport, I was like, okay, this is, this is gonna be huge. But I also thought it would be a great learning experience for me uh, being a legislator for 10 years on the County Council on Kauai and then 16 at the state legislature in the house. I thought after that many years, it was time to, to learn something different to contribute in a different way and that opportunity came to fruition and I am um, I'm totally excited because in DBED there are so many different agencies and divisions and they kind of are aligned with uh, my background you know my hotel background I started uh, in the late 70s working and aging myself uh, <laughs> But I started in the late 70s uh, busing tables at a, at a hotel restaurant. And so from that uh, time, I just worked my way up. I was always one of those um, people who wanted to learn, to do more, to learn more. And you know, ultimately at that age, it's making more money, right? So the tips in banquets was better than in the restaurant. So I went that way. And then the tips as a bartender was better than the tips at banquets at that time. So I went and bartend. Um, but along the way, I had had many people in my life that um, were uh, mentors and wanted me to, to uh, expand my role from an hourly employee into management. So I managed um, hotels and restaurants. I started on Kauai, came here to Oahu at the Holiday in Waikiki Beach the Holiday Inn Airport, then I moved to San Diego with the company, traveled all over the country working for the, the, the company, um, got an education from the company in hotel management. Um, and so, you know, that was the early part of my life. As I was on the mainland, it was always a goal to come home. So I, um, I decided to come back home and open some restaurants and that gave me another opportunity to see how, um, Oh, it's not easy to own and run a restaurant in Hawaii. So I can I can understand the the struggles that business owners go through. And then the last eleven years, um, 
I was working for Spectrum. I was their business manager, coordinator. So I got to learn the technology industry. And so, so all of these things just lined up uh, in, in, at the right space at the right time. So I feel like I'm blessed, like I'm the luckiest person in state government. I work with a great, great, great team here. And I'm just going to take a short uh, while, uh, Yanji, if you don't mind, to introduce him because these people work really, really hard. You know, Dane Wicker is our deputy director, Dr. Thean. He's one of the most um, respectable economists in the state of Hawaii. Dennis Ling is our business development administrator, all very well respected. Ryan Andrews, our stadium manager, Mary Alice Evans, planning uh, program manager. We have Greg Barber at um, Nelha on the Hawaii Island. Uh, Craig Nakamoto, HCDA, Mark Glick, our energy officer, Maria Pasquale, our um, ASO, David Schicking, um, foreign trade zone administrator. I spent the afternoon with him yesterday, just learning all of these different parts and pieces of, uh, of DBED. And then Leishi Goshi, our communication officer, Kellyanne Yamamoto and Don in, in our administrative office. And just because they've been so helpful in my transition and you can't do it without a team, um, but it, it's been, um, a big challenge, but it's exciting. It's exciting to see that people are trusting that uh, with us working together, uh, we can, you know, fix Hawaii post COVID. So to that end, what the, the first thing I thought we should do is to put together a working group. And the working group consists of, um, it's probably going to be about 100 people. But you know, people in the finance sector, people in the development sector, people in the restaurant and retail sector, people in the health sector, and many, many, many business leaders who, you know, I was uh, so honored when I called them and I said, you know, uh, I, we need help. The state needs help. We need input from community. We need input from stakeholders. So one of the first uh, pers uh, business leader I called was Sherry Menard McNamara at the chamber because definitely the chamber and our missions are are pretty much aligned and so she was excited she said she's never had the opportunity to work on something like this with dbed i called all four county mayors um they're all in um all of them are very very excited uh, as most people know mayor kawakami is like a little brother to me uh, spent a lot of time working at the state capitol so i thought as a neighbor island person it was important to connect the counties to make sure the counties felt like um, their voices are heard, that it is important, uh, the input that they, they give to the state. So the counties have been engaged and I'm really, really excited. Um, I, I believe our first meeting is gonna uh, come out probably in the middle of July. Um, and it's just it's just been an honor to put a group of, of business leaders like this. And I, I won't share the names now until we have the meeting, but. It is, um, it is a great list of, of, of business leaders. So, you know, that's the things that um, are my priorities for right now. Um, we have HTA. When I first came to DBED, um, HTA was going through some struggles at the legislature. Um, we have the stadium that was in the spotlight, no pun intended, um, and the film office. So. We've been, I've been working on those three areas and um, my deputy director, uh, Dane Wicker has been following up with many of the other ones, but um, you know, it's just making sure that uh, we give the support to the agencies as it's needed. And then we follow up and we make sure that uh, what we're asked to, be, to do gets done. And the agencies that need support get the support from our office. And, and that's that's what I've tried to do in every single um, management uh, opportunity that I've had, and it will continue to be the same way here. Uh, at the stadium, we have a good team with um, Ryan Andrews and the board chair, uh, Brennan Morioka, who is taking a big role in um, the completion or getting the RFQ and the RFP done for the stadium. So. You know, all of those things are, are looking, you know, really, really positive right now. Um, and I'm just excited to be on the ground level right now to help these teams move forward and communicate the, gov the governor's uh, goals and wishes on 
on um, uh, on the stadium. At HTA, I um, you know my like I said, my background was in hotel management. So there's, uh, as you saw with some of the bills that were circulating uh, last session and sessions before, there was a lot of concern from the legislature about uh, how the agency was being run. Um, you know, to the point that uh, it the HTA didn't get funded. And I, I, I know for a fact that many of the legislators were very frustrated with their communication or the lack of communication at HTA. So one of the first things I did when I started was I met with the leadership group at HTA and I've known all of them for many, many years. Um, John DeFries, I've known him for at least 25 years. Um, so, you know, I had to, we had to sit down and say, look, things that are happening at the HTA are not getting communicated to the legislature and they're frustrated. Um, you know, you don't get to two years in a row with, you know, the, the funding source for HTA uh, being abolished without there being frustrations and a lack of communication. So our first goal, as I spoke with John about, is to restore um, the communication and most importantly, uh, restore the trust with HTA, uh, DBED, and the, the administration and the legislature. So. You know, that certainly was um, important to achieving those goals for uh, the first major priorities. Well, and you've got so much, and I think anyone who has worked in restaurants uh, and food service knows how to juggle a lot of things, and clearly you are juggling <laughs> so many when you list those deputies and all of the different responsibilities they have. Um, but let's hone in on HTA for a second now. We know that John DeFries will be stepping aside uh, in September. Uh, the governor has said he is nominating you to the board there, and the board, of course, will be responsible to pick a new HTA leader. Um, without necessarily criticizing uh, John DeFries and his leadership, what are you looking for in the next leader that you think would be different uh, that you so that you hope those lines of communication that you were talking about can be uh, a little bit you know better managed if you will well certainly that so you know in um, in my life um, you know sports has always played a, a key role in my life and what I've learned if you have the opportunity to do that is call a timeout and figure out okay what is the plan? We've got to figure out what the plan going forward is. So for right now, um, my uh, conversation with the governor and, and his team is to, you know, let's just do a reset and figure out what is going to, what it's going to take for the legislature to trust, trust the um, authority moving forward. So, you know, we, what we need to do now, uh, Yunji, is to put together a plan um, to share the plan with the, the, the key stakeholders at the building um, to see if that's where they see HTA going and, and uh, implement the plan. So I think at this point, we're going to put a, a hold on the next administrator for now. Like I said, a timeout to uh, just figure out where we need and who and what we need in, in the authority. Uh, and, and, you know, for me, it's not rushing in to find somebody so that it can take uh, less work off my plate or anyone's plate at the authority, but to figure out what we really need in, in an individual going forward. So that's the plan for now. And who knows, the legislature may, it may make some changes that, you know, we wouldn't want to hire someone and that person starts the job, comes in, and then the job is uh, no longer exists. That wouldn't be fair to anyone in this community. So, um, you know, that's that's where uh, my direction is right now with with uh, that that position, um, and that could change if if there is a, a voice to uh, give us the green light to move forward. That look, you guys made some changes, and that might come up in legislation in the next session. But until now, and we're almost in July, we have, you know, six months before uh, the session starts. And then, you know, hopefully we can communicate what that plan going forward is. And, and again, and it's, it's critical, and I'm going to say it many, many times, is to regain the trust and the, um, the uh, communication trust at, at, um, at HTA. 
So what you're saying is that you don't think that a new director will be named before the next session? Not, that's, not, that's not my position, is to, to name a new one before the legislative starts. The legislative session starts, yes. Okay, interesting. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the stadium. We know that DBED uh, has has a role there as well. And, you know, it was very, things got a little muddled, let's say, uh, toward the end of the last administration as to who was calling the shots when it came to the stadium. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what your role is in helping to manage this project? And, and do you see them me meeting, uh, you know, it's hard to know when, when we say UH will play there. I believe the last uh, time the governor was on and talked about this, he said 2038, but correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. <laughs> no, no, is it, did that too far? Yeah, that's too far. <laughs> uh, uh, correct me on that. I, I promise you I won't be here in 2038. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what do you see as the, um, as the role there and what do you see as the realistic timeline for when that stadium will actually be functional? Okay, okay, so let me just do this real quick. Uh, I just wanna go back on HTA and just say one more quick uh, line. Um, I've also tasked um, uh, Daniel Nahopili, Isaac Choi, the CFO, and Kalani Ka'ana Ana with more responsibilities to take on the roles that, that John will be uh, vacating from. So those three people know that they have to step up with, uh, along with myself and others on our team. So that's closing that part of the interview. So the stadium. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, Ryan Andrews and Brandon Morioka um, have, have um, really put uh, the pencil to the paper and have come up with a plan that will stay within, hopefully stay within the budget because there is no more money um, and w work on uh, a potential private, private public partnership with people that could be um, getting revenues from the development around the stadium and and to clarify the date is 2028 the football season of 2028 yes 2028 uh, i i don't want everybody to know I, I got that number wrong off by 10 years and hopefully that won't come to pass yeah uh so 2028 i knew there was an eight in there but i got the <laughs> i got the one before that wrong okay so 2028 hopefully within the budget what is dbed's role there and do you think that that time frame is realistic um, I do based on everything so far, you know, uh, I, I think in some of the projects, I know people have been very skeptical because, um, in some projects in Hawaii, some of the big ones, I'm not going to mention names, but, um, we haven't done it on budget and we haven't done it on time, but I think this project is a lot more manageable. I think we have, um, some good, um, examples. Uh, there's a stadium in, uh, San Diego that is pretty much the same size as the stadium that we're looking at. And I know that um, many of the um, uh, legislators have seen it. Uh, there's going to be a conference in San Diego at the, I think the middle of next month that um, legislators will be in the area. So they'll be looking at that stadium. So they'll get information from a group that just finished the new stadium. So. Um, you know, it's good examples to uh, compare apples to apples, things that um, they could have done better, things that they wish they did. So all of that is ha is going to be happening next month. Um, and then the RFQ will be put out and, and you know, whether, whether you're uh, a sports fan or not, you know, people have a lot of pride in um, high school sports, University of Hawaii sports, and, you know, Many people can refer back to the day when BYU and Hawaii played and there was 50,000 people in the stadium, but that didn't happen too many times. So we got to look at what was the right size of the stadium and the number comes out right now to 35,000 based on the money that we have and, and um, you know, the area that we're going to put the stadium in. So my job, Yanji, ji is to uh, make sure that again, um, Chair Morioka and Manager Andrews have as much of the resources that they need, have as much communication with the uh, legislature, because at the end of the day, the funding comes from the bank and the bank, in our case, is the legislature. So, you know, I think be, be, uh, between myself and Deputy Director Wicker, you know, we spent many years at, at the um, legislature and I think 
Uh, many of the legislators, uh, we've developed uh, established trust. We've established a working relationship. And, you know, it'll be our job to um, lobby for uh, resources and things that we need at the stadium. And, and I know that I've been able to do that over the years, and it is, uh, it's going to be a big part of um, our responsibilities going forward to make those uh, connections and, and generate that communication to make, uh, to come up with a good uh, project at the state, at the new stadium that the people of Hawaii are going to be proud of. And that that's our biggest goal. Let me ask you about the economy. I know that you're not an economist, but obviously you work very closely with uh, one of the best of the best. So let's talk a little bit about the health of Hawaii's economy from everything that you're hearing from the experts that you work with. Uh, what are your thoughts about the health of our economy going forward and you know the possibility of a recession and, and where you see the vulnerabilities of our economy? Okay, you're right. When you say uh, the best of the best, and I, 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 I know I mentioned him before, it's Dr. Eugene Thien. Um, I remember listening to Dr. Thien when I was on the finance committee 15 years ago. And I was like, man, this guy has a lot of information in, in his uh, CPU in his, on his head. And he was just coming up with numbers, not even looking at notes on, you know, uh, indicators throughout the world and the country. And so I asked him the question and I said, uh, doctor, do you think Hawaii is going to go into a recession uh, soon? He said to me, he said he believes that the United States at the in the fourth quarter is looking like it's going to go into a recession. But he said Hawaii should be fine. We're not going to have he doesn't see growth, but he doesn't see us, you know, two quarters of uh, of negative uh, uh, growth in, in, in the state. He, but he said it's certainly going to be flat and it's certainly going to be close to it, but um, he doesn't believe that. So I trust his judgment. Um, and he's talking, looking at uh, text information and information like that. Some of the things that we're doing uh, to get travelers back to um, Hawaii and especially in the uh, Japanese and Asia market, uh, Korea and China as well. And then in the Canadian market, um, we need to make sure that uh, we continue to uh, market to those groups. And, you know, the HTA has spent the last three years, I believe, in, in um, a campaign talking about Malama, uh, Malama in Hawaii, which we all agree on. Um, but we're looking for that traveler that's going to be responsible and respectful when they come to Hawaii. And I'll give you an example. Um, Malama Hawaii was a good campaign in the United States, but in Japan, um, it, it, it was made, brought to my attention that some of the people in the, in the Japanese market were not um, overly embracing of that campaign because when uh, the Japanese tourists come to Hawaii, they are very, very, very respectful. Um, to the point where there is no other country in the world that has two million hula dancers or hula halaos uh, with dan two million dancers uh, as part of their country. The ukulele is a big part of the Japanese culture. So when, when they come here, they are already in touch and in tune with the culture. So, you know, whatever we're going to be marketing to them is not going to be that anymore. It's going to be more on the line of, you know, we, we miss you, come back, you know, because the Japanese tourists, a visitor, when they come, they spend a lot of money. In fact, the whole Asian market, they, they do. So that's a focus. Um, and, you know, we just have to make sure that that, that message is uh, communicated uh, when we go out and, and do our marketing. I want to go back to that working group. We're almost out of time, but we do have a few minutes left. That, that group that you're assembling that you talked about at the top. What do you hope comes out of that meeting? I mean, are you looking for ways the state can help support, for instance, the counties or the businesses that Ms. McNamara, Ms. Menor McNamara, rather, support? I mean, what, what do you hope comes out of that kind of a partnership? What are you looking for in that group? Um, I, what I hope to, a few of the things I hope to accomplish is that people in the business community feel like they have a voice. They feel like they have people who care. So, I mean, I'm sure in your role, Yanji, you, you know, you have people that would tell you, well, you know, if they, if they only did this, 
that we could fix that. You know, if they only did that, we could fix this. Or we could, oh, this would be great if we only did that. Okay, so friends and family, this is your opportunity to to let us know what it is. And and I say that half jokingly, but it's true. Um, you know, we we don't see all the struggles that that business owners go through on a day to day basis, but they do. So if they can share a couple of, if they can share ideas, and that's going to be the goal for everybody to send in three to five things that they think can help their business do better. And then we'll cross reference it with all the other people who send in the same type of um, uh, uh, thoughts and concerns. And then we can start working on individual things. So we can start connecting the county with the state and the state with the federal government. And, you know, DBED is so big, but it's so enterprising that our job is to make sure that all the dots are connected and that all that every type of resource that people need to be successful, we can we can we can generate out of this division and department and help people who need help in our business community right now. And that's that, that's that's the key goal. So you know we have um, to that end. I I, I was totally um, I got chicken skin when a lot of these people who I've known for many many years said, Jimmy. You're right. We need to do that and we need to get involved. You know, I thought some of them were going to say, nah, I'm, I'm kind of busy. I'm on this board. I'm on that board. Uh, but, you know, from the highest levels of our private sector, um, they've all agreed to, to, to be a part of it. And so I'm, I'm, I'm totally honored to, to be a part of putting a team together like that to help fix uh, the things that need fixing. Yeah, and it's very interesting to me. So, will these be public meetings? Will these be private meetings? Um, how public. often do you plan to meet? The, just a few um, the, of the the basics there. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, the the meetings will be public, um, but you know, like if you have a commission, then you gotta, you know, have. It, there's there's gonna be people taking notes, and it's gonna be recorded. But it's just ideas. Let's come up with ideas, and then in the different sectors. Okay, so this group, restaurant group. You guys, you, you go off on your own and you coordinate what you need to coordinate. Healthcare, development, housing. You go. This is you go do your thing and come back and report. And then we can tie all of those things going into uh, into the next session. So I'm I'm uh, I, I told the group that once a month we'll have a big meeting, and after that, uh, committee groups will work on their own. Whether it's a sports committee, whether it's a music, uh, uh, an entertainment committee. So all of these people will be working to come up with ideas because you can't do that all in one meeting. Everybody has to break out into their own little uh, areas. And, and that's the goal, um, you know, and, and collect all those ideas together and, and, and put them, whether we do it through le legislation, whether we do it through rules, whether we do it to, you know, if you guys just change this, we can do that. So that that's what the goal is. But again, I was so, um, I was so touched with the, all the mayors. All the mayors said, "Jimmy, we got to this. Got to work." I spent a lot of time with Mayor Bissett at Hawaii on the Hill, and he was so excited. He was so happy. You know, Derek uh, Mayor Kawakami from the beginning said, "You know what, brother? That's we got to do that." And I and I want to help. So, uh, Mayor Blangiardi, your former boss, uh, he was. He said, "Jimmy, I'm all in. Just tell me where I, where I need to be." And so it's exciting. It's exciting that um, we can do all of this, and I don't think um, it's been done like this at this level. But we ha this is this is critical. This is a critical time in Hawaii, uh, in the business um, climate in Hawaii right now. So I, I we can't fail. The responsibility okay. is too big. Well, well, we will be following up with you once these get underway to ask you about how they're going and the results that come out of that. It's very interesting. It kind of is reminiscent of, you know, I think about the first early days of the pandemic and those working groups that were yes. immediately put together to try to figure out, OK, how do we save our restaurants? How do we save our retail? What do we do? Mm -hmm. And it kind of has a similar feel. So um, yes. we will definitely be following up with you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's uh, one minute before the hour, so we are out of time. But we appreciate all of your time this morning. You are managing so much, and we really, really uh, appreciate all the information. Thank you again. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Hey, great to hear from him this morning. And DBED really is responsible for so much. You heard him there lay out his biography at the beginning, all of the different experiences he's had is 
throughout his career, both in the private sector, in hotels, and also in the communications industry. Uh, and then, of course, in the public sector uh, as a council member and, of course, as a state lawmaker, um, just bringing all those different experiences together. And he says really leading him to this point in his career where he feels very ready to take on the challenges of DBED. When he spoke about all his deputies and all the different offices that DBED has a hand in, uh, you really get a sense of all that this d director has to manage. He spoke at length about the HTA. He, of course, will be uh, joining the board there once he is approved there, the governor uh, uh, nominating him to join the HTA board. Um, John DeFries, the current CEO of HTA, will be stepping down in September. You heard Director Tokioka there say that he does not expect to nominate a new director until the legislative session is underway or perhaps when it's POW, uh, just so that there is a clear understanding of the mandate of that agency working hand in hand with lawmakers. In the meantime, time, he's tasked some of the deputies there at HTA and throughout his agency uh, to take on some of those responsibilities so that there is not a leadership void at that agency. It'll be very interesting to see how that progresses forward. Uh, on the stadium, he is uh, very optimistic that they will be able to get there and be playing by 2028 with the budget that the lawmakers have laid out. He says that they do not intend to go over budget and that they are looking at around 35,000 seats for the stadium. Um, that, of course, is a very big project that DBED is helping to uh, manage as well. Um, and just talking about the state's economy overall, the health of the economy, he thinks that, you know, based on his conversations with the state economists, that uh, there will be a flattening, if you will, of growth, but that we will not experience the same recession that they are projecting on the continent. That said, he is assembling a very interesting working group of the county mayors, different legislative leadership, and then also the private sector, really bringing in business because uh, he says that he has heard again, again, again and again that there is a feeling that they don't necessarily always have a seat at the table. Uh, what's going to be different about his administration or, or his leadership, rather, he says, is really bringing in those voices as well. Those will be public meetings, the first one getting underway shortly. Uh, we'll be tracking those. We know you will be too, and we'll be bringing you all of that information right here on Spotlight Hawaii. On Monday, uh, it's a conversation that we haven't had in a while and one that we are looking forward to. Vice Admiral John Wade uh, from the Red Hill Task Force, of course, from the Navy, is going to be joining us, giving us an update on what's happening with the defueling of that facility and also those conversations about what comes next. A lot of concern uh, about the safety of the defueling itself and what should happen once those fuel tanks are emptied out. So join us right back here on Monday. Ryan will be back then. We'll see you then. Have a great weekend. Aloha.